Hi, I'm Lucy Steigerwald for Liberty.me, and today my guest and I are going to be talking about country music and libertarianism, which we swear has enough ties together to take up a whole half hour of conversation. Um, my guests today are Seth Wilson of cultwestern.com. Say hi to the people if you want to. You know how hi to the people. <laughs> and also uh, Zach Fontaine, a songwriter and a blogger at uh, RushmoreBeekeepers.com. Say hi if you hi, want. People. We're libertarian. Oh, I want to say hi. Good. Yeah, don't don't boss me around. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay. Yeah. So, no. so yeah. I guess general open discussion, starting off with uh, libertarian music and lack thereof, and whether we want there to be more libertarian music or whether it's just invariably going to be, you know, awkwardly earnest ballads about Ron Paul or something like that. <laughs> um, I don't know, whichever one of you wants to chime in, Zach, uh, I know you write songs. Um, have you ever written a libertarian song? Um, I wrote a couple, actually, and uh, I only wrote them um, during, I did this songwriting project where I wrote a song a week for a year. And I think the only reason I actually released them was because I was releasing everything that I wrote at that time. And uh, and they still kind of make me uncomfortable. I mean, one is like, you know, one, I mean, one is basically just about how, you know, how poor politicians are a bunch of liars, you know, not that original, I guess. And, uh, and the other was um, like, I guess, partly libertarian, but uh, um, I try to sneak in little things here and there, I guess, as opposed to actually writing political songs, because I tend to hate political music. Um, is that because it tends to be, you know, leftist, or is that, well, with, I mean, I guess there's exceptions, but um, to me, I think it's kind of like this, the lack of subtlety in political music that's usually the problem. Um, if it can be, yeah. that's, the, that's the problem. If I agree. Like, I want libertarian music, but if it was explicitly libertarian, it would be weird and awkward and it would be a ballad about Ron Paul. I don't. I right, think the line, right. Yeah, the line is kind of tricky. Um, Isn't but, awkward earnestness the only emotion you can associate with Ron Paul, though? That's so true, especially with the Iraq stuff. I was reminiscing again recently about like, bless his awkward old man heart. Just yeah, you know, awkwardly earnest. That is the epitome of Ron Paul. That's a really good point. I can't wait till we get gifts. We can get a gift tattooed on us because uh, it's happening. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Every libertarian <laughs> a in the world is going to is going to pick that one. It's true. Oh yeah, it's going to be great. Um, um. All right. So more specifically, I guess, um, what kind of let's? I mean, we, we I could talk about punk, I suppose, but that you know, because that's a, another political, very political genre. But country, yeah. generally, we think of as being pretty solidly awful and conservative. <laughs> you know, that Have You Forgotten song that rhymes forgotten with Bin Laden. Oh, know, right. So. Oh, yeah. Well, I think, I think country is a pretty, uh, pretty populist um, genre, and it's as populist, it's as far left or right as sort of populism runs at that moment in the country's history. Uh, I mean, I would say it definitely seems to veer right. Uh, then you have guys like Johnny Cash and, and Willie Nelson who grew up under the New Deal, and so they're, even in the more conservative moments, I don't think, you know, Willie's conservative about anything, but uh, even in the more conservative moments, it, it definitely used to that sort of New Deal I idealism and, and sort of populism. Uh, yeah. Or, um. I mean, there's like there's like the outlaw country thing, and then there's the the, the Nashville country, I guess. And the outlaw is supposed to be very, you know, it's it's Steve Earle, and um, we have, we're gonna have Steve Earle sooner or later. But yeah, um, I have a whole segment at the end. <laughs> to get more specific about libertarian tinge songs, I like to take songs and sort of use them for my own libertarian ends. Not, you know, not pretending that Steve Earle is himself a libertarian, because obviously he's not. But um, right. Copperhead Road, one of my favorite songs that I can't stop listening to, is it has like a great, you know, a story element to it, um, which 
which kind of is the, the, the great thing about country music. Um, but, you know, it, it, it involves, it mentions the draft, it mentions war, and at the end it has this uh, implication that <laughs> some sort of awful confrontation with the DEA is about to go down. Right. Um, I guess... Well, I mean, I think that song's kind of interesting because if you talk about sort of like the, the more right or libertarian streak in in country music, I think that song and that album in particular, because it's it's a, a theme album or a concept album, so it's really sort of hits on the uh, the most libertarian current in, in country music, and that is you know sort of Scots Irish mountain people who you know spent d generations always trying to get that much further past authority and want to, you know, live up on the mountain and do their own thing. And I mean, because he's, he's sort of tapping into that culture, he's tapping into that sentiment. And then, I mean, I mean, Steve Earle, especially back then, was pretty anti-authoritarian. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, it, oh, you go, Zach, go Oh, ahead. Um, I was just going to say, yeah, talking about that, um, you know, that same thing about putting, you kind of, you can kind of find libertarianism in, um, in a lot of different music, but in, you know, in a lot, in, you know, as far as like the left, it tends to be like, you know, anti-war songs or that sort of thing, or, you know, of course, not as much in country music, I guess, more in, in the folk genre, or, or even like Tom Waits' uh, Road to Peace, I think is just a really amazing, chilling, you know, anti-war song. Um, oh, yeah. But it seems like they're, yeah, each, um, you know, depending on the genre, they have like the, the far right tends to have more anti-authoritarian teams or themes, I guess. Well, the left covers the more sympathetic, like civil liberty um, ideas. I think that, yeah, that sort of applies. Um, and I, I guess there's also the question of like, is an anti, just like an anti-authority song, is that libertarian um, enough? Like, um, or uh, let's see, Johnny Cash, we, we've mentioned Johnny Cash, um, obviously, he you know he he wasn't the jailbird that his uh, reputation sort of you know the, the myth built up around him became, but he really like legitimately if you read about it like he he was worried about people in prison you know um, kind of kind of cutting edge worried about people in prison and that was a pretty radical thing even now and especially back back when he was playing Folsom Prison in San Quentin. Um, and then, it, I don't know, thinking of, like, uh, Old Crow songs, I know that they're uh, probably mostly a bunch of liberals, um, but a, a lot of their stuff, they have their, you know, their, their bootlegging songs, and they have their murdering songs. Um, and then they have something like I Hear Them All, which is a pretty damn peacenik song. Uh, I, I, I don't know, I guess... I, I guess I just come back to like I, I want there to be I, I want there to be libertarian songwriters like Zach I mean there uh, who, who, uh, who give us libertarian songs but like we don't know it so it's not going to ruin it for the people who are secretly going to be listening and um, yeah soaking in the the subtle rays of anti uh, authoritarianism right because you could tell a story that's you know that could be funny or could be sad you know and you know and it's kind of based in libertarianism I guess. I mean, there's plenty of, there's definitely plenty of material as far as the drug war is concerned, you know, and, uh... Yeah, there should, I mean, I was always, my friend actually once wrote me, like, an awkwardly earnest, huh, um, <laughs> punk song that was against the drug war. It was literally my birthday present. It was very nice of him. <laughs> He's not a libertarian. He is, you know, sort of a, a bleeding heart hippie um, who writes very <laughs> earnest songs in, oh, okay. in his own right. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, because there are people like, uh, like, you know, Remy, who I really enjoy, you know, who does, uh, you know, does a lot of stuff with reason, but that, that's definitely, you know, geared towards, you know, libertarians. I mean, he has some songs that are just kind of funny, but, you know, a lot of the stuff he does with reason are definitely, you know, you know, they're definitely, you know, for libertarians and something that libertarians will enjoy. And other people might, but, but, uh, but yeah, it's geared towards that, that audience I mean, as opposed to just... Just addressing the themes within a normal, you know, non-political song, I guess. I think. I mean, I think. I think any song about authority is probably going to have to default to being sort of anti-authoritarian. Just like you can't write. It's hard to write a happy, uh, ha uh, good song about being happy. It's probably hard to write a good right. song about being 
being an authority, uh, you know, authority figure, and and yeah. or or in praise of authority. So I mean, just any any song is it's naturally going to take that anti-authoritarian song. I'm just like the ballad of Joe Biden. <laughs> that sounds that. awful. I actually like the Onions version of Joe Biden a lot more than the real Joe Biden. I would listen to the Onions Joe Biden song any day. It's actually just Van Halen too. That's all it is. Is the entire Van Halen too album. You know. <laughs> um, going off of, of, of that, Seth, but like the thing is, there are very, there are pretty damn pro-authority um, songs, and I mean, again, um, that horrible "Have You Forgotten" song, and I can't remember who wrote it. Daryl Worley. Um, Daryl Worley. Yeah. Uh, Did he ever have any other songs? Yeah, he was sort of a, he was sort of a mid-tier. Um, mid-tier guy in the late 90s and and really sort of more traditional and that was really sort of his last I mean just as I'm remembering this I, I could pull up his pull up, you know his Wikipedia and find out differently but that was really sort of his last big song because um, the current changed sort of the, the musical taste changed so much after that kind of like Lee Greenwood I mean nobody remembers any Lee Greenwood right, song so for God bless USA yeah. right so there is this um, habit of that kind of song, um, and again, uh, that horrible song was between 9/11 and the uh, Iraq War, I guess. So it was. Uh, I don't know if it was a hit, but I know that you know uh, Toby Keith and um, I guess Alan Jackson had their really painful, <laughs> painful post 9/11 songs. That, what was that like? Boot in the ass Alan, or whatever. Alan, that, yeah, Toby Keith, so right. Keith had the boot in the ass song, but uh, Alan Jackson's uh, of the three. I find Alan Jackson's the most because it does it does what good good music and good art is supposed to do is take something big and make it personal. And you know, it was just a guy sitting in his house <laughs> thinking like, "Oh my God, things are terrible," and I'm watching right. the kids outside. So, I mean, of, of the three of yeah. them, I think that one didn't start start macro and end macro it you know and it's almost better in that sense because it's not um you know when, when there are songs that kind of seem to address the nation or try to speak for the nation as a whole like that makes me really uncomfortable because uh, um, maybe it's the anti-authoritarian yeah but, unless it's your like but, but it's not it's not as appealing yeah and you don't want to listen to it you know i don't you know i just don't you yeah, know. you got to be amphetamine Dylan to write like a I'm addressing the nation song. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's really, right. He's the only guy that could do that. Exactly. Not, yeah. not that I'm saying I know for sure that Dylan was doing that, but yeah, but probably. In case he's watching, hi Bob, love you. <laughs> hi Bob, we're your friends. So much yeah, I love you. <laughs> um, hmm. At some point, and, I wanted to. Um, oh, do we have more? I don't want to control this too much or too little. So. Oh no, it's um, it's okay. I was gonna say, uh, I know. I think um, on our like earlier conversation, I, I had mentioned this, but there's this uh, this uh, country singer, uh, Casey Musgraves. That uh, I don't know if you've heard her. I've heard the name a lot, and I've been meaning to look her up just because she's been talked about a lot. Yeah, you know? um, and she's definitely more in like the, I guess like the pop country type world. But I think she has, you know, I think there's there's some of that that is. It's pretty good, or you know, at least you know, at least you can get like a couple like really nice songs and off an album. Um, She's but, definitely uh, the closest thing like like millennials have to to like a traditionalist country. Right. You know. Yeah, because you can hear a lot of that in her music. Yeah. The, the the production is really good. It 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 sounds very country, but it doesn't sound dated. And and the lyrics are cool. They're they're very you know. She's got, she's got good good lyrics. Yeah. That's and that's a, the thing I was thinking about is um, is a song like uh, uh, Follow Your Arrow, which is, uh, I think that was like the, no, that, was, that wasn't the title song on the album. But it's, There's a second. No, it's a title song. Is it? Oh, no, 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 it's not. It's not. Because, uh, oh, same trailer. All right, nerds, focus. Yes. Anyway, same. sorry. <laughs> We're focusing. We're, it, it, takes it was the second single off the album. Yeah, yeah. Music um, dorks, music dorks. <laughs> music dorks. Um, uh, but it's, um, you know, and I guess, um, you know, she played some, like, LGBT um, support events and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but the song actually, you know, mentions, um, you know, that it's, you know, it's okay for people to be gay and it's okay to kind of do your own thing and love whoever you want to love. And actually talks about, you know, smoking marijuana in there, which is 
really interesting for someone in the pop country world. And I don't know how oh, yeah. popular sure. she's remained since then, but it's very. Um, but when I heard the song, you know, I definitely heard the libertarian chant in it. Not that we're all a bunch of pot smokers. <laughs> you know, I don't. You know, I drink Probably coffee. It's not pot. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that. I love that uh, argument. Republicans who smoke pot. Mm -hmm. um, but hearing that was striking to hear. Yeah, that's fine. Do whatever you want. Um, but it had this real, yeah, this real um, great, like a real emotional take kind of on the, you know, live your life how you're going to live it and, and uh, you know. See, that feels libertarian to us as libertarians, and then <laughs> you invariably find out that someone's, you know, a, a, a democratic socialist or a, a democrat, you know, they, 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 they write a right. song about living your life, and then they vote for Obama the next day and that right. sort of thing. So, live your life. We'll just control some of it. Right. I mean, and that's why, I guess it, it comes down to, like, you, you want a libertarian to be writing these great songs that are accessible to all these people. And you don't want to find out, I guess, at the end of the day, that they support various awful things. Um, right, right. And really, you know, I think. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was, <laughs> I was just going to ramble, ramble some more. Okay. I was just, I guess, curious. Um, branching a little away from country, um, but I'm th I was thinking of anti-war songs and protest songs, and um, I don't know what. I mean, this might be a little too like minutia e, but like. What makes you know Masters of War awesome and um, like Paul McCartney and Neil Young's post 9/11 music just appallingly bad? Um, <laughs> uh, but like question. you know like what it's like you, you approach this political thing, but you can't if it's too vague, it's no longer about you know these yeah. issues. But well, if it's right. if it's oh. too specific, it becomes sort of bizarre. I think well, I, I think you either have to go. You, you either have to be very specific, um, and I, t I think one of the all-time great country anti-war songs would be "Mama Bake a Pie" uh, by Tom T. Hall. I don't which know is, this song. I, check it. You really need to Spotify that as soon as we're out of here because it's it's <laughs> okay. really great. Song. Right now, commercial. As, as as all Tom T. Hall songs are, but um, that and uh, well, Ruby, don't take your love to town, which is a guy who's lost use of his legs in Vietnam and his wife was running around on him. It's kind of also an anti-war song, I guess. But um, they're very, very specific story songs, which is sort of how country, if it has a message, if it has some sort of, you know, sort of larger message, it will usually pin it on some sort of every, every man like that. Um, so I think, I think, and that's, that's really placed a country's strength as a genre is that sort of every man specificity uh, and is, like Masters of War, I mean, Dylan's probably bullshitting us all. He said he was not <laughs> paying attention to Vietnam when he was writing that. He was reading uh, old newspaper articles from the Civil War. But I think, <laughs> I think in that case... That's totally true about Dylan, yes. Yeah, and he, and he could be bullshitting us. And, and, and if he is, I mean, that's kind of part of his brilliance. This is, you know, and the song's still good, no matter if he's bullshitting us or not. I mean, and because, because it, it, maybe it's, that's the point. it's vague on... It's it's vague. It's such a huge remove that that song could be about pretty much any war ever, because right. just the sort of the facts don't change. Well, it's like I about the just the military industrial complex as a whole, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, oh, could, I mean, I'm, somebody in Athens could have probably sang that about going to war with Sparta. So, you <laughs> right. know, I mean, it's just it's it, to me it it just hits that that baseline. That's, that's such a basic basic themes. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and he's played it at like, you know, he's that's one of the songs you know that he's had on his, um, you know, playlist at shows for years. Like, you know, when I saw him, he played it, and it seems like every live album, you know, there's a version of it yeah. somewhere. So I, I didn't think know that he has, still played that. That's good. Yeah, to know. yeah. He's um, also, he still plays a lot of stuff off his Christian albums too, which is which <laughs> yeah. Probably not good. I, I like the Christian trilogy a lot. So. I haven't yeah, yeah. ever listened to his super Christian stuff. I don't think. So Lutheran Cummings is pretty good. Right. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I, my fear about this sort of uh, conversation we're having is that it all comes down to, like, the je ne sais quoi of awesomeness, and you can't, you know, or, or like uh, the, the, um, the obscenity test, like, you know it when you see it. Uh, you know it when you hear it, like, right. like, like when it works and stuff. Um, let's see. And it's hard because it's so... 
you know, I, I mean, music, I think music as an art form is so interpretive that, you know, unless you're kind of saying something outright, you know, it's interesting. I mean, like, like there are a lot of songs that we could see as libertarian songs that, you know, you know, and then you, you know, see an interview with the writer or whatever, and they have this totally different take on it. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to have that aspect of it too, because you don't really know what is, you know, I mean, like Bob Dylan, you know, making up, you know, well, what we think he was, uh, he was, uh, you know, paying attention or not paying attention. Yeah, it's, um, well, I mean, I, I always appreciate uh, Dylan for his, his like ridiculous refusal to be anyone's, um, messiah. Um, I mean, obviously he's a weirdo, but like his refusal to be anyone's, you know, political messiah. And I remember they did that Rolling Stone, um, interview with him like two years ago. Right. Um, and he just like they were trying to get him to say something pro Democrat and um, yeah they kept asking about Obama I remember that mm -hmm. yeah yeah and he gave such a just a kind of bland half sort of statement that they just ran with like it was they want I mean they right. they want him on the team that's that's kind of the thing it's um I want Bob Dylan on my team we all know <laughs> so who does we that? all know he's a libertarian let's establish that right now. I mean, I think part of, part of this also is this, um, the idea that most culture, I guess, unless you have a, um, a a caveat of some kind, like culture is is seen as liberal, and that's you know movies and music too. And I think that's conservatives' problem often is that they they try to overcompensate for that sort of invisible liberalness, and then they sound ridiculous, like the aforementioned um, you know 9/11y songs. And uh, I mean. Do you guys, I don't know, do you guys think it, it would help to have sort of libertarianism more mixed into the culture? Or does it not matter because, you know, if we had a thousand libertarian songwriters, the point would be that we were already there? I, I think, I, mean, I think there's a lot of, I don't think it's in country, but I mean, I think a lot of hip hop is pretty libertarian. But, That's a good point, actually. You know, and Big Boy actually voted for Gary Johnson. So. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. But uh, and I mean, I, th I think it's I think it's there. I think um, with, with alternative country, because you're getting so many people who are coming from like basically aging out of like college rock to punk rock and and needing to play something a little more quiet because you're you're since tinnitus, um, <laughs> it's probably always going to skew a little uh, sort of college college lefty. Um, but you know, I I think so long as as people get speeding tickets or um, worry about carrying a joint in their pocket or something like that. I mean, there's always going to be that anti-authoritarian um, je ne sais quoi, that, <laughs> that sort of anti-authoritarian thing to music. I mean, country music is is inherently an outsider music. It's, it's defined by its otherness. It's not, you know, it's the people who live out there. It's those people over there. So, I mean, it's always going to have that that aspect of, of that sort of outsiderness and that sort of anti-authoritarian. I hope so. As long as yeah. national... I mean, now it's all about, like, hanging out on tailgates with jailbait and <laughs> drinking, like, store-bought moonshine. But but I we mean, still have a ton of, um, I mean, outlaw country-esque in, in anti-mainstream Nashville. Like, there's so much of it out there, um, which, is, which is delightful, of course. Um, so... It's not the, the right. state of country music isn't as dire as some some. Oh no, 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 it never yeah. is. I mean, yeah, there's always. I mean, there's so much more of every type of music now. I mean, more yeah. than there ever has been, which is awesome. It's just, you know, how how much do you want to look for it? I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's. I mean, part of it is. Part of the problem too is you know that libertarians don't always want to be called libertarians, and they don't always want to be part of a team as much as. As much as you know, like Democrats or Republicans or other or other like high-profile political groups do. Right. You know, there's so much... cats. Yeah. Right. It's, yeah. Right. So there's I mean, that. It's that not thing in a... Yeah. <laughs> Good <Exactly. laughs> Oh, I was just gonna say there's that something ingrained in libertarians, which is you know, which a lot of them would probably disagree with me. You know. <laughs> it's an ideology based on disagreeing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's it's so, not yeah. ideology based on like, well, I don't want to do what you're telling me to. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, um, plus, you know, it's gonna really, really, really hard for a libertarian musician to play uh, the White House, you know. So maybe that's part of it too. 
Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, supposedly, supposedly Dwight Yoakam's a libertarian. Like, I think the only political statement he ever made was in support of a, a sort of a minimalist Jeffersonian democracy. It's a good start, but, Dwight. Uh, good start. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, he doesn't do interviews much at all anyway, so which is probably smart. But... That rebel. Yeah. <laughs> he's acting like a libertarian. And then really, <laughs> there's a guy. He's not. I mean, he's not like by the book libertarian, but he's a Canadian guy from Alberta. His name's Corb Lund. And Alberta is sort of like the Texas of Canada from what I understand, so ranches and oil. Um, but he's got songs about like the gold standard and police brutality and, nice. and things like that. And he's, I mean, he's kind of an interesting guy. He's a song about prepping, which I don't, you know, I don't <laughs> know if prepping is inherently libertarian, but. Uh, Maybe not, but I still immediately want to hear that song, so. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, I mean, he's from Canada. He'll say nice things about the national, you know, the single payer health care or whatever. But at the same time, he's deriding fiat currency as being counterfeit. <laughs> which actually, the he's putting out a new album. Comes out July first here in the states. It's Counterfeit Blues, and that song is about sort of this fiat currency. Nice. Um, you know, Let's we'll put that on your list. Dollars much anymore. Yeah. It's gonna be a, it's it's gonna be a good good album. So, looking for an introduction. That, okay, that's the way that's the way to go. Um, so I guess I have two more queries. Um, did you guys happen to read that alternate story um, that I sent around and also was tweet rolling my eyes about? Yeah. <laughs> for the, um, for the people it. at home, let me recap for the people at home. Um, this entire, al- oh, sorry. This entire <laughs> alternate piece is basically I was in Trader Joe's and I heard Under My Thumb by the Rolling Stones. And in the wake of Elliot Rogers, um, you know, gun massacre with misogynistic t- overtones, I decided to complain about it. And then they told me no one ever complains about it. And th- the end. Um, it was a very strange, yeah. I mean, it was very inane, but it also sort of you brought up, you know, these, these questions um, like songs, songs about bad things which is so country music and so blues as well. Um, I guess, um, you know, murder ballads and all that sort of thing. Um, a general query, I guess, both do we need to stop being political, like when we feel the urge to write alternate stories about, um, <laughs> about you know, the Rolling Stones being terrible, or is this, you know, sort of, sort of the tolerance of libertarianness of music. I don't know. I'm trying to get to a, a point here, but like, do you guys have... I, I just want to know who is who in this day and age is surprised that the Rolling Stones are kind of sexist and shitty, <laughs> and they're sort of in <laughs> well, relation to women, right? Like, yeah. Like, I mean, if I wanted to hear someone talk about like holding a girl's hand sweetly, I'd be listening to Beatles, and like, I don't listen to early the Beatles. Beatles so. yes. Yeah, early Beatles. <laughs> Not Maxwell Silverhammer. Put Seth on the list. <laughs> yeah. Um, I yeah, loved and, Maxwell Silverhammer when I was like 10, which is kind of creepy in retrospect. Right. Well, see, yeah, there's another one. <laughs> that, you know, it's, it's this cutesy song. And and that's such a strange, like of all the songs you would hear and think like, oh, this is horrible and inappropriate of the wake, in the wake of this you know, tragic incident. Um, under my thumb is such a weird one because it's so. I mean, the lyrics are silly. Like, sure, it's a mean song, but it's it's silly. And I don't think anybody. I mean, and before I read them today, I don't even know if I knew what half of them were. Mm-hmm. And now that I do, I don't know that it makes any difference. It's just a silly song, and I don't think it's gonna. You know, it's not gonna incite anybody to violence, which I think is the. You know, apparently seems to be the yeah. implication there. I yeah, don't even I know if that's the implication. It's more like it's. Insensitive, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. Like, it wasn't even bold enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's so, it's, Under My Thumb is so vague. I mean, if, if, like, you, how does he have this woman under his thumb? It's, and to me, it's just dumb. And, and the thing, like, the Rolling Stones, especially in that, that period of time, is they're, they're just copying, like, Muddy Waters and Stephen Harpo and all those guys, like, as hard as they can. And it's like, I, like I hate to tell you this, but like old blues guys, not that nice to women. I mean, no, old blues women, not that nice to women. So. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, you know, the, the blues cliche and sort of the country one is like shooting your no good woman down. Um, but there are right. there were reversals. There's um, 
you know, Frankie and Johnny is a reversal. Um, there's some a couple of other ones where the woman shoots her man down. I don't know. I like pretty songs much all of about Miranda bad Lambert's things. Career. Yeah. What was that? Pretty much the entire Miranda Lambert catalog is about shooting men. So. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I haven't listened to her much either in my time. Yeah. But. Me either. Uh, so much. I mean, I just <laughs> know like all the know, music. Because you're a nerd. Yeah. Well, okay. I know all her big singles are about that. So. Okay. And if, yeah. I lived with, if I lived with Blake Shelton, I'd probably want her to shoot him too. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, but like, I like songs about bad things. I made an entire Spotify playlist about murder with a little suicide yeah. mixed in. Um, yeah, listen to it. <laughs> yeah, I need to find that. And this is sort of political. To object to this kind of music is in itself political. This sort of liberal, softy idea that like, well, we shouldn't touch a talk about that is not nice. And maybe if we talk about it, you know, bad things will happen. And this maybe leads into the final point, which is not that we should turn off our brains about politics, because politics sucks and it hurts people, but that music and culture are so much better <laughs> than politics. And let's just take a moment to appreciate how much better. You guys, you guys aren't in you know, the libertarian movement, uh, as far as I can tell. You guys kind of seem to do your own things and think a lot about, obviously, music. Um, I don't know, just can you give me a little bit about like why your lives have more country music and less thinking about, you know, Eric uh, Cantor in it? I grew up in rural West Texas in the 80s, so I, I don't know that I had much of a choice. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I grew up in El Paso, and I mean, the Marty Robbins song, especially back then, you know, it's going to get stuck in your head. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, grew up in a farming ranching family, so that's kind of what we listened to. It's what we did. Uh, fields and riding horses across the desert and all that. It's cool. mm -hmm. Music that makes sense yeah. to me. Yeah, and yeah, and I don't know. I think just I found music much more appealing than anything political people I, I knew was doing. And maybe that's because in you know I'm from uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico, which is you know pretty close to El Paso. Um, but it's it's one of those places that at least at that time you know seemed to have, um, or you know when I started hearing about politics, you know it was all I mean kind of like the rest of the country where it's this even split between, you know, Democrats and Republicans or left wing and right wing, and you know I just uh, I just really didn't want to be um, in that fight. <laughs> I guess probably, and I just you know had had more fun things to do I suppose. I mean, are you guys, like, I have other, um, uh, other people I know are, are sort of like you. I have a amazingly Southern friend um, from Virginia, and he, I've been to a bunch of old pro shows with him, and he's introduced me to some other uh, bands that I love, and he plays, you know, a little string band thing, and he, you know, he calls himself a libertarian. It's not like he hasn't heard the word, but, you know, he just sort of lives a libertarian life. Um, and, you know, avoids certain laws and, you know, doesn't murder people because he doesn't want to and that sort of thing. I mean, are you guys anti, are you, are, are you libertarians because you don't, you're not interested in controlling other people and that's sort of it? There's like a subtle point I'm trying to find here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. For, for, for me definitely uh, growing up in, in the country, growing up in a rural environment, definitely made me not want to control people, but also not want to be controlled. And you know, um, and and then I, I live right, my you know where I grew up. It's right on the border, like the rivers in my front yard. Zach, uh, Zach has seen it. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the border right wall in my yard. So whether I want it or not, um, politics is sort of right there. And and when you sort of investigate it, you know, you, you can't look at that border and not, not wonder, and then the more you look at it and think like, well, you know, all the problems we're having a half a mile away from me, if you legalize drugs, they'd probably go away. And, you know, we change the, the, change the way we handle immigration, then people wouldn't show up on my doorstep having been beaten by the coyote. So, um, I mean, that's sort of, that's sort of definitely an entry point into it. And, and also just growing up being able to run wild in the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Set the 
Yeah, Seth didn't have any rules when he was growing up. He doesn't need any now. <laughs> stay with the, um, the nice side of the house. Yeah. <laughs> it was flat. You could see a long way. So. <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's where a big part of it comes from, you know, is I don't, you know, I think like you were saying, you know, I don't really feel the need to control anybody. And and I, def I think that comes from not wanting to be controlled. You know, I kind of want to be, you know, left alone to an extent, you know, and... Um, and uh, I think that's, you know, that's what makes it kind of hard to get uh, get politically involved. Because like, ah, oh, just leave me alone, which probably <laughs> is not good. No, know, but... I think it's a good impulse. I mean, you can't, you know, and some of my favorite libertarians, like, you know, my, my uh, shame, uh, embarrassingly excessive hero worship towards Radley Balco, um, <laughs> part of that is, and he, the man lives in Nashville and he loves country music as well, but... Um, like you know, he I, people who don't nerd out about politics, who, people who give it kind of the side eye, and either they involve themselves because they want to do some good and and try to get the government to bugger off, but the impulse to ignore politics, I think, is such a healthy one, um, and that's one of the many reasons that I like you, you fine gentlemen. <laughs> Why thank you. <laughs> I actually, um, I mean, I try not to talk about politics a lot because I just don't want to make every single person mad. And well, I think well, of course. <laughs> I, I'm also, I'm also just like contrary to my nature. So <laughs> I mean, I think, that, I think that has a lot to do with it too. Well, it's you know whatever you're doing, keep it up. Um, but I, you know, I don't know. The the takeaway here is that country music is is awesome. And um, I, I would agree. <laughs> yes, more awesome than politics. That's that's the subtext and the text of this particular event. I think we should probably wrap this up for today. Um, I think that we should talk again sometime, possibly about conspiracy theories. Um, yeah. And you guys, you guys gotta send me some some lists that we can put up beside the podcast, so uh, the people can learn more about what they oh, should yeah. be listening to. Sure. Yeah, um, I have one ready. I think. Good. Oh, good. So um. Send those to me, and I guess I will stop this here broadcast. But um, Seth and Zach, thank you very much for talking to me this evening. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for having us.